that no one until this day has been able to emulate or imitate the literary form of the Quranic discourse. But what's very unique is that the Quran was formed into chapters. And these chapters are literary and numerically coherent. Hi guys, there's a claim which comes up again and again and no matter how often it is refuted, beaten down, ridiculed, it seems to periodically resurface. It must be incredibly tempting for Muslims to have some sort of justification for their belief the Quran is miraculous in some way and thus perfectly written by a perfect God. Well, if that is the case, keep looking elsewhere. Muslim apologists usually have only a few thoughts why the faith they have in their ideology is justified. One, they believe the Quran has divine origins because it is scientifically compliant, inerrant and unchallenged. The universe and all life is handcrafted by their personal creator God. And three, some nonsensical points, just fine tuning, morality, purpose, existence, and stuff like that. All these claims have been refuted over and over. The Quran is not scientifically correct because, well, just for example, the creation of mountains and of, and of humans is completely out of whack, which, which has been aptly demonstrated. There are lots of mistakes, which I've demonstrated as well. The classic God of the gaps arguments when it comes to the origins of the universe and life are simply wishful thinking, and all attempts by apologists at bringing up any type of rational arguments have been killed. The other points I mentioned have been shown to be irrelevant or plain wrong, so in this video I will, well for the second time, investigate the claim of the miraculous nature of the Quran by looking at what apologists claim is the built-in verification checksum. They love to sound all sciency without understanding any of it. Anyway, the claim is that the Quran, the chapters and the sentences in it are so incredibly well written and so eloquent and complex that humans could never even come close to replicating it, hence the Surah like it claim. And as Charles Colton once said, imitation is the highest form of flattery, but not for the Quran, it seems. So just to clarify something to avoid any possible misunderstanding, if this is even possible, even if the Quran were spotless, structured, eloquent, inerrant, superbly told, with amazing word choice, a vast vocabulary and an incredible amount of rhetorical devices, it would only mean one single thing. It is well written. Just because a book, a painting, a song or any piece of art for that matter is a cut above the rest, this only demonstrates the immense creativity of humans. It does not in any way indicate divine origins. We don't have any divine text to compare it to. The texts we do have, some of which are far superior by the way, are written by humans. So if a text were divinely written, I think it would mean with absolute certainty that challenges and taunts would be unnecessary, as everyone would be completely in awe of this text. And as it turns out, hardly anyone is when it comes to the Quran. Humans appreciate beauty and harmony. but tastes differ. I don't like Coke or McDonald's. Many others do. I like pizza. Others don't. So we all look different and our values and views differ as well. So let me raise a couple of points before delving into the details of this challenge. A challenge which I actually consider to be outright funny. Now every human and every product by a human is unique. What I'm writing in this essay has never in the entire history of the universe been written before in this form. It is totally unique, yet I make no claim for divinity. Beauty and eloquence are subjective by any objective method of measurement or unit. 99.999% of the population on this planet are unable to read or write ancient Arabic. There are five different versions of the challenge in the Quran in different chapters and different senses, each 
contradicting the others and all lacking a specification on what the challenge actually is. And 1113 goes so far as to call the 10 sentences we are to produce forged, fabricated or invented right off the bat. Bring something like it does not say what the like in like it should be. There is no specification what the it is and what the it is supposed to be. The challenge is not clear on what is to be produced. There, there's no requirement regarding language, format or, or contents. There's no specification regarding the wildly fluctuating styles used in different chapters in the Quran. Now the entire challenge is flawed logically well, as the challenge to produce a Quran when only, I don't know, something like 18% have been revealed would be impossible. Does, does that mean the challenge to produce a Quran was the last sentence to be revealed? Anyway, I'll demonstrate this in a few minutes in more detail. Muslims, unfortunately, are forced to believe all five claims made in the five senses and they have to believe them blindly. And they have to believe this is impossible because the Quran states in 2.24 that you will never be able to. And not believing it would be doubting the contents of the Quran, which is not permissible in Islam. So the Quran is inerrant because the Quran says so. <laughs> 2.23 states, call your witnesses. Who are the witnesses? Can anyone be a witness to this? Why, and why should anyone actually try when it says any attempt will be futile? How could anyone succeed if the attempt itself is punishable by hell? <laughs> On what grounds and by whom have existing submissions been rejected? And there's no, there's no specification whether the abundant mistakes, for example, need to be included. Is it, is it sufficient to repair faulty sentences to produce something better than the original Quran? Would a similar chapter need to contain contradictions, misogynistic, nonsensical, awkward and violent parts as well? <laughs> anyway, this is the challenge I'm talking about. Here are the five sentences with their varying and vague challenges on what is to be well, produced and, and some, some context. So, what does reality in the here and now have to say to this? Apologists often claim that the challenge can only be fulfilled if delivered in ancient Arabic or Quranic Arabic. In 1788, however, it clearly says the whole of mankind and jinns, not only Arabs or Arab-speaking humans. So this challenge is for anybody and everybody in any language. Also, it is a challenge to all non-believers, whether jinn or humans, and not just to you know, Arab-speaking people. What I find odd is that an all-knowing God would wait for the third edition of his book before attempting to write it properly, and failing again. And apologists realize that you know this is, this is a childish challenge, and, and they've added some of their own criteria, not mentioned in the Quran itself, because they claim that the actual miracle of the Quran is that it converted millions and hundreds of millions to Islam, whereas a copy will not be able to do this, and then declare the copy a failure by default. <laughs> It shows the dishonest attitude of some Muslims who will not stop at anything to score some brownie points. And an Egyptian Arab recently came up with some nasheeds, you know, this, this la la, and Muslims agreed that there was not a single mistake in them until he revealed that they were actually anti Quran sentences, just made to sound like a Quran recitation. And there's hundreds of examples of people who have accepted the challenge and have placed on websites such as uh, Perfect Quran, Better Quran, Surah Like It. And some are in exquisite poetic style using 7th century Quranic Arabic. Now Muslims regularly protest these sites and try to shut them down in an attempt to silence them. Because you can't have what is not allowed. So Muslims constantly on the lookout for reasons to be offended show they prefer censorship to intellectually honest discussions. There's a, there's a guy, AFL Bestun, in his book Arabic Literature to the End of the Umayyad Period, and he provides a huge amount of Arabic-speaking Arabs who accepted the challenge some over a thousand years ago. And they range all the way from, from Ibn al mukaffa Zaidi Imam, da 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 da, Abu Harita, all the way up to Basavinpur. 
They came up with examples such as in the name of compassionate and merciful light, the Manichaean variation of the Bismala. Then we have the Surah like it contained and fulfilled in the Quran itself. I mean, chapter 53 contains sentences which, well, they were not conceived by the Islamic God, but Islamic Satan. So Satan was capable of producing something like the Quran, so realistic and similar, in fact, that it fooled the 7th century Arabs around Muhammad, the first-hand experts. Now, historically, on the Arabian Peninsula just over a thousand years ago, the Syriac and Nabataean used in the north and the Sabaic in the south and the multitude of Bedouin dialects in the desert in between, they were vastly different. And that is when the Quran provided a common language for the entire Arabian Peninsula. And as such, it was indeed unique. So Muslims misunderstand comments by Orientalists who describe the Quran as a unique book, unsurpassed for, for centuries. I mean, how, how should any book, any chapter or any sentence appear in this language? Ancient or classic Arabic is no longer used and no books have appeared in this dead language for hundreds of years. So it is indeed unique. Can they, the Muslim apologists, answer questions like how, in what way exactly, is the Tamil Ramavataram inferior to the Quran? Can they demonstrate this? The Sikh Adi Grand or Guri Grand Sahib is considered to be the best humans can offer. Dante codified Italian, and he was a man, not a god. Sai Twombly, whose paintings, sculptures, drawings, and photographs are, you know, like the man, inimitable and irreplaceable. Erison Lex is one of those unique artists whose inimitable calligraphic work and timeless visual style transcends a diverse range of galleries and artistic platforms. Quentin Blake's work is called incomparable, inimitable, unmistakable, unbeatable. A man, not a human. Velasquez, an inimitable genius of painting. And then we have the inimitable Michael Jackson. So all I see is that we have a mediocre book at best, which offers very little in eloquence and harmony, which is why Muslim apologists try and drag their product into an area of emotional attachment, far away from facts, logics, and objective assessment. Now, I said earlier that I would come back to the fact that the challenge is illogical. So because this is so frequently misunderstood, let me elucidate this using a let's pretend drawing. Okay, So if I take a timeline and I now add Muhammad's lifetime on there, this is the approximate time span of 23 years of when the Quran was allegedly and magically revealed. If I now take any point here, anywhere during the revelation, it is clear that the majority of the text has not been revealed yet. And thus, nobody could possibly bring something like the Quran because the Quran was not complete yet and thus did not exist as such. So nobody could provide a copy of what did not yet exist, demonstrating the childish and primitive nature of this challenge. It's like, that means saying, you can't lick your elbow, and if you can't lick your elbow, a god exists. Should you now try licking your elbow, and you will be tortured as punishment for trying. And now let me finish building your elbow. <laughs> That's how crazy it is. So in summary, the challenge, one, makes ambiguous, varying and contradictory demands. Two, leaves open what must be delivered, in what way, and with what consequence. Three is illogical, because you can't provide a Quran if it's not revealed yet. Four states that it is impossible by definition, no matter what. And five threatens the applicant with eternal torture. So the Surah like it challenges childish, dishonest, illogical, downright silly, and irrelevant. It is a demonstration of the simple disposition of most of apologists and their craving for some form of acceptance. And, and it looks more like a plea or an emotional appeal than a factual claim or rational argument. And remember, even if it did make sense, it would not provide any kind of evidence for a miracle or the existence of a God. 
But just to prove my point, how ridiculously easy it actually is to beat the challenge, I will take what is said in 5234, then let them produce a statement if they should be truthful. And now, to show that I am better than the authors of the Quran, I will define what I mean and what I'm doing. I'll take 12.1, which says Alif Lam Ra. These are the verses of the scripture that maketh plain. And then, by using a selection of sentences from different chapters as guideline, and then based on these, create chapter 115 of the Quran. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. These are the sentences which explain it to you. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Sierra Tango Foxtrot Uniform Oscar Michael Golf Lima Oscar Lima November Oscar Bravo Oh And I know what you don't know <laughs> Challenge matched, fulfilled, delivered and done Just like in the Quran but without a single mistake or any contradictions Unfortunately, only a god will know what they mean, just like in the Quran. You're welcome. Oh, caveat. Before you go crazy and women start throwing their hijabs at me, this does not mean I am a god. This does not mean your god just ceased to exist, in case you are that way inclined. But non-atheists will have to get used to the fact that scripture is neither special, nor holy, nor sacrosanct, nor are any religious texts anything near perfect. Again, you're welcome and thank you for your time.